This is going to be a guide on how to fight with a two-hander in Requiem. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about how to build two-hand characters, but I will provide examples of both light and heavy armor play, as well as the usual perk choices for each. My main focus is going to be on actual fighting techniques that you can use if you're a two-hand wielder. The first thing I want to show you is weapon swing and how it affects your movement. Movement is the most important thing when you play with a two-hander. If you look at a one-hand weapon, you can swing and move freely, and it barely slows you down. There's a tactic you can do with one-handers, where you move into an enemy, hit them, and then quickly move away so that they miss. This is a very effective way to play with a one-hand weapon. But if I pull out a greatsword and start swinging, you can immediately see how much slower I move. This in-and-out tactic doesn't work with two-handers, at least not right out of the box. Movement is a lot more important for two-hand builds, because when you swing with a two-hander, you're committing yourself to the attack. You can't easily back away if you change your mind. Swinging also opens you up to counterattack. You need to be aware of the length of your weapon and your enemy's weapon if they have one. Weapons typically aren't the same length and having a longer weapon is a big advantage. For example, this greatsword is longer than this battle axe, which is probably longer than the warhammer. You want to become familiar with your weapon's reach because it allows you to hit enemies without them being able to hit you back. When done right, this looks a lot like the one-hand technique that I mentioned earlier. A good way to develop a feel for this is to practice on mud crabs. There are a lot of these around Whiterun. What you want to do is move in and clip them right at the edge of your weapon range, and then move back away before they hit you. And the big crabs work best for this because they have greater reach and they're more likely to punish your mistakes. They also drop food that you can eat to regain stamina so you can keep killing more of them. As for weapon types, there's not really a whole lot of difference at the beginning of the game between any of them. Greatswords are going to swing a little faster and have more range, while warhammers will be the slowest of the three, but they're also going to hit the hardest. And then battle axes are going to sit somewhere in between those two. These differences get amplified substantially as you perk out your two-hand tree. In general, Warhammers will be your best choice for builds that don't have smithing, because Warhammers provide armor penetration, which is necessary to kill a lot of high-level enemies. If you do have smithing though, greatswords or battle axes are going to be better, just because smithing allows you to obtain sufficient armor pen, regardless of the weapon that you're using. In this video, you're going to see me using a greatsword and a battle axe, so you can kind of compare the two. But as you'll see, there's really not a whole lot of difference between them. At the beginning of the game, you're mostly going to want to stick to regular weapon swings. Try to avoid using power attacks until you have the level 22 hand perk that reduces power attack costs. This is because power attacks drain way too much stamina at this point in the game. Even if you're playing a Nord or an Orc, watch as I do a power attack here and my stamina just tanks. I highly recommend getting food buffs as soon as you're able to. These are going to help you deal with your stamina problems in the early game, and also add health to your character. If you're playing a Nord, Redguard, or any other race that doesn't have the strong stomach passive, you'll want to make vegetable soup as your stamina food. This is the easiest soup to make, and you can often find all of the ingredients on farms, or just buy them yourself. You also want to purchase raw beef, salt, and garlic for beef stews. Vegetable soup grants one stamina regen per second for two hours. This effect is active in combat and functions as a constantly active mini stamina potion. Beef stew gives 50 health and 25 carry weight for the same duration. Both of these items are easy to farm and you should always have them active on your character when you're out of town. If you play one of the beast races, you can eat beef stew, stew instead of vegetable soup. Beef stew, stew gives you 3 stam regen per second as opposed to 1. For this reason, orcs are typically the best choice for two-hand heavy armor builds because the extra stamina regen alleviates a lot of the early game problems that heavy armor characters will be facing. Throughout this video, I'll be showcasing gameplay from two different characters. Both characters are around the level when you can begin doing early game content, and their gear is reflective of this. The first is an orc barbarian, and I've chosen the warrior stone for this character because damage output is a focal point for this build and the Warrior Stone gives 20% damage to Archery and 20% damage to Two-Hand. He has basic perks in each of the combat trees that a Barbarian might use, 
The two most important early game perks here are the level 20 two hand perk that reduces power attack costs and the level 20 evasion perk dodge which allows you to sidestep attacks. The other character is a heavy armor Nord. These characters are going to let me show you things you can do that apply specifically to evasion or heavy armor builds. For this particular build I went with the Lord Stone which grants 100 armor and 15% magic resist. These stats are more useful for heavy armor builds because of their poor mobility as well as the nature of damage reduction which makes additional armor more effective the more armor that you already have. I'm going to go over the heavy armor and light armor specifics in more detail at the end of the video. For now, I want to demonstrate the common tactics that apply to both types of builds. You can identify the characters in the following clips by looking at the weapon type. The Barbarian uses a greatsword and the Heavy Armor Warrior a battle axe. I'm going to start with techniques that generally apply to all combat situations. The first is what I call the ring around the rosy, or just kiting around an obstacle. The obstacle should be thick enough to avoid getting hit through it, while still letting you hit around it. This idea is extremely effective against any enemy that's faster than you because it'll slow them down, or any enemy that you just can't afford to get hit by. If you ever find yourself being chased by a bear out in the open, running to a thick tree will allow you to perform this tactic and stay alive. One of the most critical tactics for two-hand builds is bashing. Bashing allows you to nullify all damage from a single attack. It works against all enemies, including dragons, centurions, giants, anything in the game. You typically also will get enough time after you bash something to counterattack. This could be huge because a counterattack from a two-hander is often devastating and will allow you to frequently kill your enemy in a single attack. Bashing is most effective against elite or lunge attacks, two-hand wielding NPCs, and any other enemy that has a slow attack animation. I don't recommend bashing one-handers because they tend to swing too quickly, and getting the timing right can be very difficult. I'm going to go over several examples where bashing can save your life, or even allow you to kill enemies beyond your character's abilities. In general, bashing requires good timing to execute, and you'll want to practice so you can learn the right timing for each enemy. It also drains a considerable amount of stamina, making it very double-edged when used repeatedly. It's best used against single enemies, or in situations where you can kill your enemy immediately after a successful bash. In the very early game, Bashing can be used to safely kill wolves, which are a dangerous nuisance to low-level characters. What you want to do is look at their feet, and when they begin their pounce animation, press bash and knock them back. Then you can kill them with a weapon swing. With enough practice, you can get to a point where you rarely take damage from wolves. This also works well against dogs or ghostly wolf summons, provided that you can draw them away from other enemies. You can try this same technique on saber cats and bears as well. I don't really recommend trying to bash either of them, because if you don't kill them in a single attack, you can often get knocked down and killed. Or if you just make a minor mistake, their leap attack will almost always knock you down and then they can kill you very easily. If you're playing a light armor build, you can dodge instead of bashing. Dodge is the level 20 perk in the evasion tree and it allows you to quickly move left, right, or backwards by pressing your sprint key while moving. There's a small stamina cost associated with dodging, but it can otherwise be spammed repeatedly. Dodging allows you to style on saber cats and bears with near impunity, and is also easier to execute than bashing. Bashing is probably the single best way to kill giants in one versus one combat for melee builds. Because their attacks are so telegraphed and so slow, it's very easy to bash them and get swings in against them. What you want to do is run up to them without aggroing them, because if you're already in combat with them, they're just going to punt you into the sky and you're going to get killed. You don't need to chug stamina potions, like I'm doing here, but it makes the fight go quite a bit faster. Giants are well worth farming for their toes, which can be used to make high quality alchemy potions. They also typically have a lot of animal fur on them, which can be useful if you're a blacksmith. The most common use for bashing is going to be when fighting other two-hand wielders. What you want to do is walk up to them while they're blocking and wait for them to swing. After they start their swing, you just bash them and kill them. 
this is very, very useful when you're fighting in close quarters where you can't easily avoid your enemy's swings. Here I get caught fighting three Draugr in Dustman's Cairn. I thought Farkas would be right behind me to help me out, but he doesn't show up for some reason, and I end up wasting all my stamina killing these three. So when the fourth Draugr pops out from the side, I don't have any stamina to fight with. And with no stamina, you can't move very quickly, and you also do absolutely no damage. So getting hit by her would almost certainly kill me here. And my only real option is to bash her attacks and just slowly whittle her down with my own attacks. This is a good example of how bashing can save your life. The last general idea I want to share is bull rushing or trampling. Bull rushing happens when you sprint into an enemy, knocking them onto the ground. You have to be sprinting for at least two seconds in order for the trample effect to occur. Generally, you'll want to bull rush ranged enemies such as archers and mages, especially if you have no ranged weapon of your own. When bull rushing, keep sprinting into your target until they fall over, because often there's a delay from when you make contact with them to when they actually get trampled, and you don't want to swing during this time or you'll end up canceling the trample effect. You'll have plenty of time to kill them once they actually fall over, so there's no need to rush. Bull rushing is super strong for heavy armor builds. The level 20 heavy armor perk makes you take less damage while sprinting, making it possible to rush down just about anything without dying. The boss on top of White River Watch is a very easy early game victim to this tactic in particular. You can pick up some nice steel armor and also the unique Iron Hand gauntlets which give plus 5% to hand damage. Occasionally this bandit will also have a tempered elven weapon, making this an even sweeter early game dungeon for two hand builds. You can also bull rush while wearing light armor, particularly once you gain access to the higher tiers of armor such as elven, glass, and dragon scale, because these provide protection against arrows. However, you must be able to dodge archer shots if you want to live for very long wearing light armor and bull rushing. If you don't dodge, you will die many deaths like this one. Okay, let's begin talking about specific combat scenarios and how to handle them, starting with one versus one against a one hand and shield user. One way to deal with these enemies is to wear down their stamina by beating on their shields. At first they'll block most of your damage, but once their stamina gets low, they'll start getting chunked with each swing. This is probably the easiest way to fight them, but it's also a bit risky because of the possibility of counterattack. You want to try to stay at max weapon range while doing this. Another very strong solution is to power attack the shield user while they block, causing them to stagger and giving you an opportunity to attack. This is the fastest way to kill a blocking enemy, as it immediately forces a high amount of damage while not being dependent on your opponent to make a mistake. This is the best tactic to use when fighting against multiple enemies, and the forwardmost enemy is blocking. In group combat, you want to kill individual enemies very quickly. An accelerated version of this move is the running power attack against the shield user. The idea is the same, but the execution is faster. This is easiest to pull off against enemies that aggro you as you approach them. Finally, the most basic tactic is to backpedal and kite until your enemy does a forward power attack. This leaves them vulnerable to counterattack and is also the best way to kill two hand enemies. One versus many or group combat is the hardest situation you can find yourself in. Most of your battles will be of this sort, and unfortunately there are no simple solutions. When fighting in these situations, it's very easy to get swarmed and very hard to avoid taking damage. When you're only fighting melee opponents, and you're able to outrun them, your go-to approach should be to kite and chip away as they swing and miss at you. This is a highly movement and weapon range dependent approach. You only want to swing when there is sufficient distance between the frontmost enemy and the other enemies so that you can safely attack the first one without getting hit by the rest. I miss my counterattack here and end up getting hit by the bandit. I recommend not missing. Funneling enemies into one versus one situations while kiting is very strong. Once an enemy moves through the funnel, you need to move in aggressively to prevent more from passing through. Bashing and power attacking blockers are your go-to tactics here. The 
funnel also serves as a way to block archers from dealing damage. When fighting a mixture of melee and ranged enemies out in the open, you want to pull the melee enemies toward you and then run around them and kill the isolated archers. You then have plenty of time to deal with the melee enemies. You want to take advantage of terrain whenever you can in these situations. Utilize natural choke points and terrain imbalances to separate enemies. Then take swings whenever your enemies miss or are isolated. If you have room to kite, you should do so, otherwise your opponents are going to slowly surround you. Also, if you have any poisons, scrolls, staves, or ranged weapons, these one versus many scenarios are the best time to use them. Two-hand combat requires a lot of thinking on your feet. You'll rarely have a perfect plan when fighting multiple enemies. The best way to improve is to put yourself in difficult situations and practice fighting your way out of them. Take notice anytime an enemy overextends or leaves an opening in the attack. The goal is to win every battle without taking damage. There are two perks in the two-hand tree that have a huge impact on how you fight. The first is Devastating Charge, which you unlock at level 50. This perk adds damage to your running power attacks and also makes them critically strike, doing two and a half times the regular amount of damage. The other perk is at level 75 and makes your sideways power attacks cleave, hitting multiple enemies in front of you. I rarely play with this perk and personally think it's a bad perk, so I don't have any advice to give on its use. My problem with the cleave perk is that anytime you're able to hit multiple enemies, they are also able to hit you back. And sideways power attacks are very slow in immobilizing, making it very likely that you'll get hit. I would rather not get hit, even if it takes longer to clean up a battle. It may however be useful for late game heavy armor builds, as at that point you can easily survive multiple hits from lesser enemies. The money perks for me though are at level 50. Once you get Devastating Charge, running power attacks become the best way to kill anything that's considerably stronger than you, such as dragons, centurions, enchanted spheres, vampires, and so on. With a powerful weapon, many times a single running power attack will kill your enemy. In situations where this isn't the case, an effective way to kill enemies is to do drive-by power attacks until they die. These are best done immediately after an enemy has taken a big swing at you. Having a follower or a summon to tank will also let you just sit and spam running power attacks, quickly killing any opponent. To wrap up, I'd like to go over some of the differences between heavy and light armor builds. Heavy armor builds are stronger in the early and mid game, especially with help from food buffs and alchemy if you have it. Your main concern is stamina management, and once you've mastered that, you can just roll over the early game content. Your poor mobility is compensated by the ability to play much more aggressively, as well as having practical invulnerability against archers. If you want to play a heavy armor character, I suggest starting out with a light armor. Heavy armor is basically unplayable without at least one perk in the heavy armor tree, but in my opinion, it's unplayable without the level 20 perk, which allows you to sprint without trash canning your stamina. I highly recommend joining the companions if you're going to go heavy armor. You can get some free two-hand skill ups for beating on Vilkas, and once Farkas shows you to your bed, you can have him train you in heavy armor. You're going to need 5 to 10 skill ups to get to level 20, depending on whether you're a Nord or an Orc. This will cost you somewhere between 500 and 1000 gold. The level 25 perk is also very important, as it will reduce the cost of power attacking and heavy armor, but the remaining heavy armor perks are honestly pretty underwhelming. Some people don't think I'm smart. Those people get my point. I'll show you what I can about protecting yourself. If you decide to go light armor, your power curve is the inverse of a heavy armor character. You start out weak to everything, but you get progressively stronger with each evasion perk that you unlock. You have to get comfortable dodging in the early game, or you'll die to everything, especially archers. At level 75, you gain access to combat reflexes. This perk makes light armor builds superior to heavy armor builds. Combat reflexes adds a special power to your magic menu that slows time for 10 seconds while draining 100 stamina when used. It's roughly equivalent to the slow time shout, however combat reflexes can be spammed, giving you a permanent slow time effect as long as you have a way of regenerating 10 or more stamina per second. This is easily achievable with alchemy. When combined with the devastating charge perk in the two hand tree, 
you're able to do absurd amounts of damage while your enemies just sit there and die. The level 100 evasion perk is also very very strong. After you've unlocked it, your character has a 50% chance when hit to reduce damage taken by 90%. Finally, smithing allows you to get near the armor cap while wearing light armor, and also lets you temper your weapons for more damage, which is further amplified by perks in the evasion tree. When you put everything together, a high level to hand light armor build with smithing is among the best builds in all of Requiem. And with that, we reach the end. I hope this guide has taught you something new about two-hand combat, and to those of you planning to make a two-hand character in Requiem, good luck.